to be doing. Um, hi Kamal, nice to have you on here. Thanks very much, I'm doing fine, how are you doing? Also, hello to John. Thanks for coming on, John. Uh, thanks for your kind messages earlier about the new podcast, John, as well. And um, we'll be talking to uh, talking about the new podcast a little bit later on in this. Um, I can see Anne is watching now. Hello, Vanessa. Thanks for saying hello. Great to have you on board. Hope you're having a good day. It's Friday here, so nearly the weekend, so things are going well. Uh huh. Just bringing now. He is the bearded half of the podcast, guys. Um, and he has to grow twice the amount of beard because I can't. Here he is. There we go with my wonderful curtains. There we go. <laughs> hello. Hello. Hello, Facebook From Live. The... So we're just saying hello to Vanessa, John, Kamal, a couple of people on there already. So thanks very much. Do say hello if you do join the Facebook Live. Um, and I was hello. just saying that we're just trying this out, this new feature on Facebook Live, whereas you can be halfway up the country just... and I can be halfway down the country. Look to your left. Just look to your left. No, no, you're the other one. That's, That's my it. right. Yeah. yeah. And then I, if I go that way, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that was disturbing for anyone watching. Hello, Alex. Thanks for coming on. Um, we're going to start talking about podcasting. That was a surprise for you all, wasn't it? Um, very shortly, just given a couple of minutes for people to join. Um, oh, let's just dive in. Should we dive straight in? Can, in? Yeah, they can. Yeah, let's okay. dive in. Why not? So, uh, like so, I said, hello, Anthony. That's a different uh, couple Anthony. Of things that I've, <laughs> I know, yeah, that's, that's Anthony. If you ever listen to On the Left Side, um, you may have noticed in the last of year or so, we've gone from having really bad Euro trash style accents to really good accents. <laughs> hey, places. those Euro trash yeah. style ones were mine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what are we going to talk about first? Are we going to talk about Apple or Spotify? Or... Yeah, why not? Well, there's been a lot going on, hasn't there? I mean, this is obviously our first Facebook Live of 2018, um, and there's been a lot going on that people are talking about. So should we start with Apple? Yeah. Yeah, so the uh, new Apple statistics are finally here, and Woo-hoo. it's something we've been excited about uh, for a long time, except the kind of – they're not here. <laughs> They've kind of, like, partially arrived, and – so so basically the promise was and what the hope was that these statistics would arrive and so you could actually look at your uh not just um how many people were listening but how long they listened for what point they listened to what device they were listening on where in the world they were and how many other episodes they listened to so really important statistics yeah. which is really useful for you um if you're just we want your podcast to get better um so you can see the points at which people stop listening or get bored uh Also, if you're growing a business um, and and you're monetizing your podcast, it's very useful to see when the most people are listening because then you can uh, coordinate that with uh, your advertising. So you could say, actually, you know what? Most of my listeners listen all the way through the show, so I should charge as much for uh, an advert at the end as I do at the beginning. Yes. Those sorts of little things. However, um, they've slowly been rolling it out, and it's it's not all there yet. And also, it's kind of limited like at you. the moment. <laughs> uh, it's limited at the moment to um, iOS devices and iOS devices with the latest update. Yeah. Which means if um, all of the statistics there, you're only getting a very small slice of the community. Now, uh, a lot of podcast listening is done on Apple devices. And a lot of people with Apple devices are very good at updating their Apple devices. But not yeah. everybody. Not everybody. So we're only getting a small slice of the pie. So shall we start with what is there and then go into what isn't there yet? Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, what is there? There's some really good stuff. So the, like you were saying, the, the finding out when people have been listening, what time they're switching off or what time they're switching back on, that's really, really great. It's great for, like you said, to find out for advertisers, but great if you have like sections to the show or you play games on the show or anything like that. If you play the same game... 10 minutes into every podcast and then all of a sudden that's when people switch off you know that game's not very good or people aren't enjoying it and so you can switch it either put it at the end or just get rid of it altogether that sort of thing so that's been great um another question that uh, we've had quite a few uh, people ask about this um in the pod tips group is about how to know how many subscribers you have which especially from apple has been pretty much uh impossible to to know for sure now you can find this out now. It's in beta on the Apple podcast statistics beta. It's almost like Inception. It's a beta of a beta. But again, you can only see who's um, 
who's on iOS 11 or the latest iTunes version. And also these, all of the stats only come from a snapshot of the last um, 60 days. So the question is, why? <laughs> because surely, you know, if you think about it, um, with TV and radio, um, the way the statistics done, there's a lot of guesswork and extrapolation. <laughs> but surely again. when you've got something where you're, you're actually physically registering for something and downloading something, you should be able to have a, a ledger, a record of it in the same way that if somebody subscribes to your email newsletter, even if they're a bot, you know you've got this many email addresses. That's right. And so you've got an actual figure you can go with. So why is there this problem with Apple? Bear in mind as well, just in case he's watching, uh, I know Ted at Apple <laughs> over in LA, yeah. um, who was an even better than me. And um, I know he's been working on this. So um, I'm just, just asking the question from you. <laughs> what you meant is be nice. No, the thing is with yeah. podcasts in general. So podcast runs off RSS feeds, as probably most people know. And that's kind of a bit of a, an archaic system. It's kind of old fashioned. Thanks, Alex. Don't ever lose that beard. Um, I won't. Uh, <laughs> um, it's kind of an old system. So it's difficult to know these things anyway. And with Apple, Apple have always locked things down. And I, I mean, I've read Steve Jobs' autobiography and watched the films. And that's all I really know of him. I didn't know, what, know him personally. I don't know people who did. But <laughs> um, I'm sure Ted knows of him. Um, but they locked their systems down. It was always the way. So the idea of being able to add, you can't add an SD card to an iPhone is a classic example. So they don't give too much away about how things work um, or about statistics. And, and we spoke to a couple of people like the game, the app marketplace, uh, music, it's very been much the same. But what Apple have done recently is realized how important those statistics are to podcasters and to the industry to be able to grow their podcasts to get more and more people in. And so they've, they've made it available now with the update, which allowed them the technology to do so. So do we think that more is going to come in the next few weeks, the next few months? Is it going to get better? Yeah, I think so. Well, obviously, the time frame will get better, so it won't be just the last 60 days, because um, the last 60 days only applies to when the update came out. So you'll see a lot more history there, and, and, and statistics are only good and worth analysis. Um, well, I'm getting put off by all the comments about your beard. Um, yeah, statistics are only good with history to compare them to, uh, but they do say that they'll keep updating and keep, and keep making them better. So and and more so, people will get iOS 11, so they they will improve. So how does how does this fit in with IAB? Because anybody that looked at the statistics all the time will know that um, there was a change towards the end of last year with podcasting statistics. Mm. So um, what is that, and is that something different to what Apple done, or does that tie in together? So it was kind of just a decision by a lot of the top bods in podcasting, um, and it was to decide that. A download doesn't necessarily mean a listen, which is a, which is a fair assumption because a lot of devices will download a podcast automatically if you've listened to episodes before or you subscribed, and that doesn't necessarily mean people have listened. So the IAB stuff. Um, so this is the kind of thing. This is the kind of thing where you know sometimes when you connect to watch a video, like people will be connecting now, yeah. but they're not necessarily just connecting via one node because it'll drop out and then they'll connect again. But you won't see that. You'll just see a, a constant stream. But actually, throughout the course of the video, your device might have reconnected five or six times. And yeah. I think on the base level, that would count that as somebody's watched six times when actually they've only watched once. And that, that's and so that been the case. Yeah. I mean, people are using FeedBurner, which is brilliant for statistics for blogs and websites and things like that. But a, a client of ours, and I'm, I'm sure they won't mind me sharing, but was using FeedBurner. And it, was, it was kind of inflating the statistics quite a lot. And that was a horrible conversation for me to have to, to say, actually, these are the realistic statistics. But it's, I think it's been agreed on that it's better that we have the real stats and we can all work off a level playing field and yes, Apple, to answer your question, Apple's new stats do, do apply to that and do work to that. Great question just come through from Alex. Uh, do you think that worrying about stats can affect a show? Why do you make a show? Is it for the listeners or because you enjoy it? And that's brilliant. That's, that's exactly what we uh, get behind. Um, we always say, you know, you shouldn't be worrying about making a, a show for thousands or, or millions of listeners. You know, if, if you imagine it, if you were the equivalent of doing a live performance, you know, standing in front of a room of 50, uh, 200 people, uh, whether you're a singer, a speaker, um, or just telling a story down the pub, or, you know, that's the kind of amount of people that is more than most people will have at their wedding. So it's that kind of, uh, th that's 
those small numbers is where it works and it's connecting. The, the way the stats can be very useful here from the Apple point of view, if they give us everything that we think, is it enables you to tweak what you're doing so you can actually look at it and see which parts are working, which parts aren't working, which parts connect, um, and, and those kinds of things. So that that's where the stats can be useful. But I would say, you know, Alex, don't live and die by your statistics because you'll invariably die. <laughs> you'll get fixated on it. And um, in fact, in fact, somebody that I work very closely with in podcasting all the time is obsessed with the statistics and is constantly looking all the time. And it's very easy to do that. Um, that's not you, Chris, by the way. No. Um, um, in fact, I wrote a stroppy yeah. article to the opposite, didn't I? So um, I think I think the thing, you just look at what's important to you um, in answer to your question, Alex. It's it's what's important to you. And so for us, it's for that people like you have Alex ask questions and talk to us and engage. And I think that's the statistic that makes it more more important than, than just how many listeners you've got. Um, so let's talk about Spotify, yeah. uh, which is something have and a lot of people subscribe to maybe you got a subscription for christmas maybe you've hooked it up to your sonos or your uh, uh, echo speakers at home as well so you've got your music streaming through that um now last year they started trialing uh, podcasts on spotify and they had a very small amount of podcasts allowed through a, as a trial and then towards the end of the last last year they opened the floodgates and just kind of went Woo-hoo! right it works people <laughs> like it come on in and um, we've just rebranded and relaunched a podcast we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but they, it, it took a couple of hours to, to get submitted yeah. and get approved. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's the difference that it's making. However, um, we do know that some people are still struggling to get that on. Um, if, if you're asking why should it be on Spotify, generally, you know, we would say if you're making something, you want people to be able to access it. So in the same way that if you wrote a book, you want every bookshop to have a copy of it. And so if you think of Spotify just being like a different store uh, that can sell your wares effectively. So um, what do people need to do to get on Spotify and what are the pitfalls to avoid that might get them rejected? Well, yeah, just going back as well, it's all about habit. So people will be used to listening to things in Spotify. So people weren't used to listening to videos like uh, two chaps like us chirping on, um, on, on Facebook, but now they are, they go to Facebook for video before they would have gone to YouTube. People go to, um, Spotify for listening. So it's not like they go there for anything else. They don't go there to read facts about things. They go there to listen. And so to add something else, that's the same, uh, habitual sort of routine, but a niche to them, it's podcasts. It's something that they might be interested in. That's fantastic. And that's why it's huge. I mean, it's the, um, no, Spotify is the biggest listening platform for music in the world. So the fact that they've added podcasts and lots of podcasts is great. They're starting to take it seriously. In terms of how you apply, now this is a bit more difficult. So you say they open the floodgates, but it's actually been just two podcast hosting solutions that they're partnered with. So we use Libsyn for a lot of them and we can, through there, go straight and click a box and say, yep, we want it on Spotify and it will take you there. There's a lot of others that are now partnered. So Libsyn with the first, but podcast websites, Podbean, um, Blueberry, they've all got partnerships with Spotify. So it should be as easy as clicking an extra box or filling in an extra form with your podcast hosting provider. Is there anything that you might do in your podcast that, um, Spotify would go, no, we don't want it on their platform because of it could be subject, possibly language, and those sorts of things to watch out for. I don't know about those two. Um, I haven't heard of anything. I mean, you have to label it explicit as a podcast if you're going to swear or anything, or if you have topics that wouldn't be suitable for, for kiddies. Um, however, the big thing they are aware of is music. So they're obviously aware that they, to have the music on Spotify, they need license to have that music and so do you as podcasters so you do have to sign an agreement at the beginning of when you say i want to go on spotify it will then go are you sure that your music is pod safe that's what they're using pod safe it's a new term that they seem to have coined um and you have to say yes um if you say no you're not getting on there i'm I'm just going to go and delete (laughs) (laughs) quick quick Uh, um yeah, I was, I was actually going to ask about that just because Spotify have been pilloried by a lot of the artists because uh, they get a very small percentage 
of so it's, it's something like you have to like like seven million plays to earn fifty p. I think it's zero point zero zero one six pence per play. So it's not wow. it's, it's not even a hundredth of a penny. So it's well, over well, hundred suppose... plays to get a penny. Right. Well, I suppose I can kind of afford that then if people listen to. <laughs> but listen the to thing is, you don't get that as a podcaster. Ah, okay. So you don't get any monetary value from going on on Spotify other no, than no, exposure. No, I'm just, I'm just imagining what the fine might be if I have something that's not pod safe. Uh, right. okay, probably no, that, a percentage of annual turnover. Yeah. To be honest, that's that's something that we're going to have to cover at some stage anyway, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that want to use music. I use, use a lot of music in my podcast as well. But there is a lot of issues and misunderstanding and confusion and different territories as well. So, for example, like you might be legally safe here with your podcast, but then it doesn't cover it in the States. Yeah. Uh, and if somebody's listening to it in the States, then effectively you're like, it's, it's a very complicated world. Um, I think it, what's, what will happen, somebody like me will get taken to court and sued, and then that will set the precedent for what happens in, in future. That's, uh, but at the minute... Yeah, and there is no nobody's... black and white of the rules yet. That's the thing. That's what's confusing everyone, because there is no black and white of the rules. All the rules say for online distribution, and so therefore we try to apply them to podcasts but actually it's quite a difficult thing to apply to podcasts as a blanket because they are listened in so if you're many looking, different ways. If you're looking for something just quick and easy right now, easiest way to get your music and source it is via YouTube and just search Creative Commons. And that's where people have put music out there and they're happy for it to be used as long as it's not being used for profit. Effectively, very there's easy. There's some really nice good subscription to... ones as well, some subscription sites where it's like a tenner a month and you get to use any of the music from the tenner a month platform in there. Um, and uh, the thing about Creative Commons, just to note as well, is that some of them are completely free to use and some of them you do need to say that you've, the person that made it and that you've used it. Unlike our Christmas so, video we... this year, which got taken down from YouTube <laughs> because we, uh, we used, it was it, it's Gary Old, uh, no, but get, Mike, not Oldfield. Gary Oldman. Mike, Mike Oldfield's yeah. uh, Christmas song. And yeah, I credited them and the, and the, uh, the record label and they still like and i applied and said look i'm sorry but we've done something fun i know it was you i put that it was you and they went no <laughs> took it down yeah. anyway so yeah. thanks guys well this, this is the thing it's always always easier to beg for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission that's um, true. anyway we'll, we'll, cover, we'll cover that another time but as i say, just take it easy the, the only other thing i would say is just be aware that when you are looking for things even though it says royalty free and copyright free it doesn't necessarily mean that it is royalty-free and copyright-free. It's a very complicated area. They've probably of, put uh, it on there so that they come up on Google first. <laughs> the, the, honestly, the, the, the best way we found to doing this is if you've got any friends that are in a band or musical, just get them to do a little jamming session and use that, and then you've got direct permission from the artist. Or just one of their tracks. As as they love having their tracks yeah. in. The, one, the guys that do, do for one of our podcasts, they love having the tracks in there. They Facebook and tweet about the fact that the track is... In there, two of our podcasts, yeah. They yeah. tweet about the fact that they're in there all the time, which is exposure for both of you. And to combine it with uh, a theme of this uh, Facebook Live, uh, they'll be playing Beard Fest in uh, Amsterdam again this year, which I'll be, uh, I'll be at. The official um, place right. of food in facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've uh, rebranded one of our podcasts. We've uh, just launched it. So we, we had this uh, show, the How to Podcast podcast, Easy for you to uh, which say. was very wrong field. yeah and uh we've rebranded that as pod tips to fit in with our uh, group on facebook which basically talks about this kind of thing all the time and the idea is to share the knowledge and um we we thought that well it is about the podcast we should have a podcast about that so uh, the idea is that we take questions from people in the community and try and answer them and i think we do all right <laughs> Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. And the thing is, it's not just us answering the questions. Everyone in there is helping each other and answering the questions. So it's been really lovely because you can be at a meeting all day or just be out on the golf course or whatever all day and come back and then there's like 10, 15, 20 people helping each other out on just one question. Um, so that's been yeah. great. What's nice is what is that? What, yeah, you play too much golf, you like Trump. Um, what's <laughs> nice is that... <laughs> that's the only more... comparison you could have made to between me and Trump. <laughs> um... <laughs> What, what what's nice about the group as well is you've got people all over the world, so on different time zones. So uh, from from America to um, Australia and everywhere in between. And so that's quite nice. Is that even if you're going to bed 
you know, you can put something up and in the morning, some people have had an answer and, and some conversation about it, which is very useful uh, for what you're doing. And quite often you'll get an answer very quickly. So if you're, you're hitting a problem now, the, the, we have noticed that some of the certain issues will come up a few times. And um, so we thought, let's just those issues that keep coming up, we'll maybe uh, make some podcasts about them. So ones that we're going to do about is like which microphone to use, how to record phone interviews, um, these kind of things that come up time and yeah. time again, just basic podcast equipment. And uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun with it. But the message is there and it's pause in my ear feed, so I don't know if you've lost me. Um, uh, you are still sort of there, whilst uh, and it's freezing up. I just got a little bit of love from people on on the Facebook. Um, he has frozen. The beard is completely frozen. Hello to Alex. Um, he says hashtag Podsafe is a term we're going to coin. Hi Tim. Um, you did miss a good chunk of this, but we'll put it onto the, the 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 Facebook feed, and you'll be able to watch it back. Mel, it's a great group. Thanks very much. Uh, Alex, love Pod Tips, great community. If you do want to go and join that, it's not like a, a commercial thing at all. It's podtips.net or search for Pod Tips on Facebook and you'll go over there and it just allows you to um, allows you to just ask questions, help each other. Um, it, the one rule of it is is that you can't promote your podcast there because it just gets boring, lists and lists of people promoting the podcast to other podcasters. They're not your listeners. So um, that's the only rule. Hello to Deborah as well. Hi. Are you back? Um, Tim, how dare you? Right. Yes, I'm back. Sorry, I just uh, seem to be getting lots of messages coming through. I've got um, friends traveling in South America and they just started sending me loads of video. Um, so, the yeah, go to podtips.net, Deborah. Uh, please, you're more than welcome to come and join it. Uh, Deborah was just saying she's interested in doing podcast interviews over the phone. That's a subject we're going to cover. Um, if you have got a particular question that you want uh, some in depth answer in, um, what we do with the, the idea with the show is we'll take one question from somebody within the group each each episode and uh we'll do a very short snappy sort of 60 second instant answer to it so you can get the all the information that you want and then we'll take a slightly longer cup of tea a uh, couple of biscuits conversation for 20 minutes or so and actually talk in depth about the, the bigger picture of that and, and add some stories and experiences from that and maybe bring in some other people. So the, there's kind of two levels to it. So if you just want to listen to like the first 60 seconds and get the answer, great. If you want to get a bit more in depth and, and contribute more, that that's the way to do it as well. And then the idea is that you don't necessarily have to listen to every single episode. You can just go and find the episode that works for you. So, um, cool. yes. So, uh, and, and I say, so, so if that's... you do have a question, What's the best way to get the question to us, Chris? So if you want to get the question for the podcast, I mean, if you've got a short question now, do fire it in the comments and we'll answer it now. But um, more so, if you want to be on the podcast, um, go to abruptaudio.com forward slash pod tips pod, P-O-D-T-I-P-S-P-O-D. And on there, you can listen to the latest episode and you can submit a question. Now, the benefit of not only getting the answer to your question, but you also can have a promo to your podcast or website at the end of the episode that has your question in. So... You, there's two places on that website you can record straight into the website for the question, and then you can record your promo as well. Do you remember a band called POD, American band? Yes, I do. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that should be our I, theme I, tune. <laughs> I I actually interviewed them once, and uh, they were doing a UK tour, and I interviewed them when I was working for Virgin Mega Sales Radio, and they brought their film crew in. So I'm sure on like a POD DVD somewhere, maybe in the extras, there's a video bad interview with them uh we'll just put the link in the comments for you now i think it's slightly easier if chris puts the link in for you um so you can just click yeah on that. i'll do that now. Uh, one of the things we wanted to talk about with this um this podcast that we've got is how we've changed it because we've been running this podcast since last year um but we've redone the format because initially um what we were doing was a, it's a kind of format that some people use which was um, taking blogs that we've written and then repurposing it as audio. And so we've left all those episodes on so you can go and listen and see how we've grown and developed as well. But what we would do with those is we would take turns. So uh, we'd have a, a joint introduction, but then I would read out the blog that I'd written. The next week, Chris would read out the blog he'd written. And then we'd add a bit of sound, bit of some effects to it to give it a bit of um, bit, bit of life. Um and that's a format that works very well for some people. When people are looking to start a podcast, they're like, well, what do a podcast about? Yeah. If you've already started blogging or writing long Facebook posts, then actually you can take that and very easily turn it into a podcast, which is what we did there. 
Um, I think we just got to the stage where um, we've sort of grown, we've developed, and we realized we needed to change direction slightly. So that format will still work for people, but we, we've come up with a format which is more like this interaction that we're having now. Me and you talking about things, sharing the knowledge, and, and learning about things, and then bringing in questions and things that push us from people. I think that it's important to mention the reasons that we've now started this one as opposed to what we did before. It was very much, and this is being completely honest, um, and you can judge us if you like, but um, it was before we pretty much were just repurposing content. So we had another version of content. We were creating these blogs and these were the blogs were getting good interaction. They were helping people. And that was the idea behind the blogs. And then we kind of went, we're a podcast company. These should be podcasts as well. And that wasn't really the right place to come from when we were creating that content. We should have gone, okay, how can these podcasts add more value to people's lives so that they take the time to actually listen, want to come back. Um, and that's the way that we've taken with pod tips. It's, it's the podcast and we can say it without being too, <laughs> too arrogant about it, but it's the podcast. It's about you guys. It's about the questions that you have. Um, it's not really self-serving. It's more to try and answer questions um, for you. I think something that's just stuck out for me there, the, the realization, getting a bit of perspective, you talking about it is um, we're kind of, and, and I don't think it was a mistake. It's just how we've grown and developed. But mm -hmm. I think, it's something very relevant for for podcasting is to be able to embrace and own everything that you've done the good and the bad yeah. and it ties in quite nicely with an interview i saw yesterday with the guy that um, is the co-founder of uh, recapture uh, which checks that you're not a robot and also duolingo okay. yeah and so obviously duolingo one of the biggest language learning apps in the world and what they've done as well is not only learn about uh, the the learning of languages but then they've got this whole community of people learning all the time that they monitor and they learn these things and uh, in the interview he was talking about how um, when he was doing his research at the beginning he found out that the uh, US Army had invested a lot in teaching people languages because obviously they've got to teach people languages quite quickly because at short notice they might go to this country and then to another country and um, they found that uh, they take these small groups of people and only a small percentage of them would really learn the language. And they always thought it would be the most intelligent people would learn the language the quickest. But they found out it wasn't the case. And um, this this will explain a lot because I, I speak a couple of languages now. They found <laughs> that the people, <laughs> the people that learned the languages quickest and best were the people that didn't mind looking stupid. It was the people that didn't mind making a mistake. And they learn so quickly and so much because actually, the, and if you think about it, there's, there's a similar thing in, in other aspects of life and business and sport. It's sometimes when you succeed and you win, you don't know why you succeeded and won, right? Yeah. So you can't remember. But when you failed, you can quite often pinpoint what the failure was and where it went wrong. Mm -hmm. And you can actually do something about that. So if it's um, if you're driving a car, and you know the, the engine breaks you know you can get a new engine you mm. can solve that problem with it and i think that's that's an important thing so so please you know when you're doing this i think there's a similar thing as well in that in the same way of learning languages and, and doing a podcast people are very self-conscious and people are you know very oh i, I, I don't want to do it wrong i'm like mm. do it wrong enjoy it. and I, I think it's very easy for me to say that because of the kind of personality that i am and it is tied into your personality but yeah and like alex has just said there you know those organic fuck-ups on the show it's brilliant the i just saw that there was a program last week uh sunday night about uh michael palin and they showed clips of when monty python got back together and did their uh state their live show and they actually found that um, everybody there knew all the sketches that they were doing inside out. But what made it for people was when they forgot their lines. And they forgot their lines because they're in, in the 70s now. Um, but it's those moments when they forget the lines and have to start again or it goes wrong that makes the show. And yeah. brilliant. Yeah, Mark, bang on. You can't improve what you don't start. Completely That's exactly agree. it. Like how, many, how many people have you met that have gone, I've got an idea for a book. I've got an idea for a film. Hundreds. How many people have you met that have gone, I've written a book, I've made a film, you know? And you know what? It might not be the best film. It might not be the greatest read, but they've done it. Yeah. They've done it. 
and and that makes all the difference and that discipline that belief that connection and you know what as well you know what you'll find is even if you've done something like that made a book made a film written a podcast uh, sorry, made a podcast a lot of people that you tell about it won't listen to it what well, well, tim's a perfect example tim's written six books i've not read any of them <laughs> but that's rude go and buy I, one I'm, I'm really, yeah but i'm just really impressed i'm like he's written six books he's wow uh, I, I, and he's, he's going to make one of them a film. I know he does sort of slightly fantasy novels. I'm currently auditioning for the uh, Wizard, uh, <laughs> Ginger Gandalf, or possibly the Viking. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a really good point. I mean, I was speaking to Mark Asquith of podcast websites the other day, and he was saying that they actually take the complete opposite approach. They really don't care so much in that they actually actively, when they're creating their new products and projects, they actively try to piss people off. They actually try to try to annoy them, try to disrupt the industry, and I suppose that's where that that comes from. So those completely wacky, different ideas that you might be scared to try on a podcast, or you've got your pride in front of you, just go and give it a go. I think because podcasting is so early in its days, people are copying a lot of what they think has been successful. But much like when Facebook launched, there were ten other versions of Facebook. Old um, Zuckerberg just did it one way and and it worked despite the fact he stole the idea yeah. from some brothers but it worked but there were nine other people trying to do exactly the same thing that didn't work and thousands of people have tried to create the next facebook after in the same way with the same algorithm it doesn't work just copying what has worked in the past you have to be a bit different yeah i think as well what you'll find out you'll be surprised when you look at these things quite often the difference between those that succeeded and those that failed right uh, it's often just something really small. Like at one point they went left, they went right. Mm. And it's just the, the, the luck or just at that moment, something happened in the world that, that brought the, brought the zeitgeist in. Um, so that's why I go around roundabouts world, uh, twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello to Guy. Uh, long time no see. Uh, I used to play American football with Guy. Um, I probably would make a good American football now with this. But, um, <laughs> let's quickly talk. Just a thing. Mark just mentioned there a scroll back up. Um, I think there's more to be learned from failure than success. And often people yeah. afraid of failure never succeed. I really love uh, everything. I've not met Mark yet, but I love everything that Mark puts in the group. And he, he's, ba he's bang on there with that. Well, basically, um, and, um, that is a quote from the latest Star Wars film from Yoda, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Greatest yeah. teacher well, failure is... Um, and it's great, but that, that's right. That fits in really nicely with the uh, theme for, well, not the theme, the question for uh, the, the current episode of the Pod Tips podcast. That was good. Uh, that was almost like we planned that. <laughs> There you go. That's good. Uh, so uh, Josh Silverman uh, came in with a question. And the question mm. is, you know, at, at which point should you kind of cut your losses and um, kind of go, Look, it's not succeeded. I'm going to walk away and wrap it up. And that's, you know, it's a big question. It's a big question. You know, and it gets, it gets but actually, you know, if you think about it, everybody that makes a podcast, writes a book, does a film, all those things, will face these challenges, will face these questions. And, you know, the, 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 the basics, because at the end of the day, you know, you've got to maintain your, your, your life. You've got to maintain your relationships, um, your work, pay your bills. You know, um, you know, make sure that you're you're taking your significant other out, or you're seeing your friends, you're feeding the children. You know, all these kinds of things that that you need to be doing. <laughs> Worried look on your face. Um, I won't I won't give any spoilers for the podcast, but there's a bit of that in there. But yeah, but th th it, it, it it's a great question. Um, if you've got a question like that, it, it doesn't have to be that kind of um, deep. Uh, it can be more practical, like which microphone should I use, those kinds of things. But Just anything say, you're struggling you with. Yeah. Anything at all. Uh, so it's abruptaudio.com forward slash pod tips pod. Hey, we'll the, you've we'll learned it. The, link. <laughs> the link's yeah, in the comments uh, now, and I'll put it in the comments for the replay of this video. Uh, fellow Beardman James Ball, hello. Uh, great musician as well. Uh, and also Ben Michael, a fellow, another musician that I used to live with in many many years ago hello to you and will blackwood as well uh, old writing partner of mine and is he related to richard <laughs> yeah you can tell by the picture yeah, they're brothers um so, so that's that's kind of what we wanted to do today i think we've kind of covered a lot of stuff if you want to get more like this uh check out the podcast just go to your podcast app and search for pod tips yep. um 
you'll find a link on PodTips um, group on Facebook as well. Go to PodTips.net. If you're not joined and you want to learn more about podcasting or you're already podcasting, you want to share and get some tips, um, just come along. Uh, you have to answer three questions um, to enter the group. It's not quite like the three questions at the end of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> what, what's your name? What's your favorite color? <laughs> It's slightly more, more different. But yeah, basically the three rules are uh, you've got a podcast or you want a podcast uh, or you've got an idea for it. Um, and I've forgotten the other two. <laughs> uh, that you don't promote in the group. So there is an opportunity yeah. once a month where I'll put a post and you can put links to your podcast. But if the group fills up with just people going, listen to my podcast, it gets really dull and boring for everyone. And realistically, you don't actually get many clicks from that. In all honesty, you don't. So um, yeah, just don't put that in there the third question isn't is such a rule it's just is there anything that you're you're struggling with at the moment and that's just to help us get some questions for the podcast cool um yeah i think that's it for today we'll do one of these again next week and yep. uh regularly uh, as we go on throughout the year um, thanks very much for taking the time to come and listen i know there's lots of uh, stuff out there to grab your attention all the time and uh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk soon. As I say, any issues that you've got, any things that you want to know, stuff that you're struggling about, stuff that you'd like to see happening that's not happening. So maybe you just kind of go, why isn't there a bit of kit that makes it really easy to do a phone interview? <laughs> Here we go. He was, <laughs> he's been wanting to do this. Hey, I'm actually no, Gandalf. Up... <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that's kind of weird, the one that um, makes me less beard envious is, uh, is this one. There you go. Now I look like you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shall we leave it there? <laughs> My yeah. uh, well, that has been two middle-aged men playing around with Facebook faces. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much, that, everyone yeah. who's uh, left a comment or even watched or anything. Um, thanks very much. Happy podcasting. <laughs>